Well, hello, kitty. Look who's here. All our fans are out there. Okay, a couple of people have asked me to um, uh, compare a bird robin to a spider coat dragonfly, and that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. I will also have to do this again in a future video, but right now what I'm comparing is a bird robin in stainless steel to a dragonfly tattoo also in stainless steel so what we have are the stainless steel versions of the bird and the spider co of two knives that are very similar to each other later when i get a bird robin um, with an frn handle i will compare it to a dragonfly with an frn handle but for right now we're just going to be looking at these two stainless steel knives now, for those who don't know, the uh, Bird Robin is in um, Spyderco's uh, economy line of knives, the Bird line of knives. Uh, Bird is also owned by Spyderco. It's their economy brand of knives. And obviously, Spyderco is not their economy brand. That's their brand. Um, and a lot of people have mentioned that the uh, Robin 2 is very similar to the spider coat dragonfly and there is no doubt that there is a, a definite family resemblance but there are also some significant differences and some minor differences that i thought i would point out and the reason i'm doing it with uh, two stainless steel versions is because i thought that would be the fairest way to do it um, and I will tell you now, despite um, the embellishments on the Dragonfly tattoo, um, the uh, regular version of the stainless steel Dragonfly uh, cost about three times as much as the stainless steel version of the Bird Robin II. Uh, and it looks like the FRN versions of the knives are also in that same three to one ratio. So your Dragonflies cost about three times as much as your bird robin um, so that is one of the most significant differences um, but we need to kind of look into why such a price difference and two things i think make up that significant price difference now first <laughs> the first difference is where the knives are made and that's something that is uh a deal breaker for some people so the bird is made in china now there are a couple spider co knives made in china i'm not familiar with all of them i know the little clip it tools are made in china but all of the bird knives are made in china uh, but other spider co's are made in other countries um, the the dragonfly is made in uh, seki city japan uh, that's where Spyderco got its start. Even though Spyderco is a U.S. company, um, their first productions were made in Japan. Uh, they also have knives made in uh, Golden, Colorado, and they also have them made in Taiwan and Italy. Um, so most Spydercos are not made in China. The, uh, the Dragonfly itself is made in Japan. The uh, Bird line of knives, they're all made in China. The bird knives uh, feature 8CR13 MOV steel. Now, that steel is going to be more than acceptable for most people. Um, a lot of people will also go, well, that's basically 440A. I'm not interested in it. I think it's a little bit better than 440A. But um, still, it is 8CR13 MOV. Uh, and if you're looking for a better steel, you're not going to find it in a bird line of knives. The Dragonfly knives, um, these days, they're um, low-end steel, and a Dragonfly is VG10. After that, they do have it in other steels, but for the most part, VG10 is what you find most Dragonflies in. Uh, and that's including the ones that go for around $80 up to $120, $130. Many of them will still have VG10. It's other things that you're paying for other than the, uh, the blade steel. And for the most part, those are the two biggest differences between these knives. Um, HCR 13 MOV steel made in China. 
VG10 steel made in Japan. Um, and that is, I think, the primary reason you're paying three times as much for a dragonfly over the bird line of knives. But that is also why um, Spyderco uh, developed the bird line of knives and started uh, producing them in China was so that people would be able to experience a Spyderco knife at a lower price. And that really did mean moving production to China and using a lower grade of steel. Now there are also other differences between these knives. Um, you can see a little bit of it right away and just the shape of the handle. I'll get to that in a minute. The other thing though is, though you really can't see it in the pictures, the uh, Robin 2 is ever so slightly larger in almost every dimension over the Spyderco uh, Dragonfly. The robin is bigger than the dragonfly. The difference is very much negligible. I, I have a chart uh, that you'll see in the slideshow that compares uh, various measurements on, on the two knives, including the weight. And you'll see that in every place, the bird is slightly more than the, uh, than the dragonfly. The one place you can, uh, you can spot it right away though is in just the, the thickness of the handle. The handle on the bird is about a millimeter more, just under a millimeter more than on the, uh, the dragonfly. Um, so that is uh, probably just enough so that the parts are not interchangeable. You also notice the shape of the handle. And, the, and I tell you what, some people when they feel the handle of the bird, they're gonna say, that feels better in my hand and I want the bird. Uh, notice how your pinky hits back there. You got the little bump there for your finger groove. Two middle fingers go right in the middle and then you got the finger choil up front. Um, not a bad grip at all. With the Spyderco, you have a different bump on the back there and basically all of your fingers kind of fall your your pinky falls right on the bump there and then you got your grip like so now for me i kind of like the spider co a little bit better but i tell you what i could get used to this one real fast real fast it feels pretty good in my hand also and part of the reason is because if you can tell right there the uh, the grip on the dragon uh, or on the uh, on the robin is ever so slightly wider than the grip on the dragonfly. So a lot of people are probably going to grab that and go, that feels better than a dragonfly. I'd rather hold that in my hand, uh, and I can see that it's really a personal preference. The other difference you see here now, like a, I don't know if I mentioned it, but this is a dragonfly. Uh, the first generation, so there's no jumping on the back here. Um, there will be jumping on the back on a Dragonfly 2. You ha have jumping on the back of the bird, even in the stainless steel versions, and you have jumping down here. There's no jumping on the, uh, on the uh, earlier Dragonflies, so there's no jumping on the stainless steel Dragonflies. Some people don't like jumping, so that might be something that they like more. Uh, other people are going to want that jimping. It gives you a little bit firmer of a grip. Also, if you notice, it's rounded at the top here. There's no peak. Um, I used to think that's what I was going to like until I got my pair of three. And then I realized that one of the things I really like on the Dragonfly is that peak. I like the way you have the point there. And uh, I like the way my thumb positions against that point. I have a better grip and don't feel like I'm sliding up over the top because of that uh, little peak on the blade there. You also notice a nice swedge up here. There is no swedge on the um, on the robin. And what's more, this blade, that's the only place where the robin is less than on the dragonfly. The blade thickness on the robin is ever so slightly thinner. Not enough to make a big difference. I think they're both 
come in at like, I think they mentioned it at 2.5 millimeters or something like that. And really it's like one of them is like 2.3 and the other one's 2.5. So it's really, when you round up, they're the same thickness. But the uh, blade thickness on the uh, Dragonfly is just a little bit thicker than on the bird. Uh, the other difference obviously is the opening hole. Um, some people don't like the, uh, the positioning of the bird's eye on the bird knife. I, at least that's what I always call it, a bird's eye. Maybe it's a wing. I don't know. Um, I have no problem working it. Um, but I tell you what, the action on the Spyderco, I have to tell you, is smoother. And it drops better and everything else. And if you notice also another difference here, and this is only between the, the stainless steel versions. Um, if you notice, the bird has torque screws holding it together so you can actually take it apart. The dragonfly tattoo or the stainless steel dragonflies, they're riveted together. You cannot adjust them. You cannot uh, take it apart or anything else. The other thing you'll notice right there is the type of uh, pocket clip that is being used on there. You've got the spider code logo there, no bird logo. Um, the screws are light, slightly different, so you cannot swap them out. You cannot put, put a spider co uh, clip onto the bird knife. And um, the difference though is this bird clip. You notice the holes here and the holes here. It is a four position clip. You can carry it left, right, tip up, tip down carry. On the Spyderco Dragonflies uh, in stainless steel, you have one option for the clip or you can remove the clip. It is only right hand tip up carry. There is no flipping it over to the other side or anything like that. Now that is specifically on the Dragonfly. On the Dragonfly 2, the FRN handles, you have a two position clip, right hand, left hand, uh, tip up carry. Uh, we'll talk about that when I review those two. But uh, really, that's the significant differences between them. Um, the weight difference is negligible in the stainless steel versions. Uh, the size difference is really negligible, even though the uh, Robin 2 is ever so slightly larger in almost every aspect. Um, but the big difference is prices, uh, location of manufacturing, and then uh, slightly different grip, multiple position pocket clip, and the shape of the blade, the ramp on the blade. That are the, those are the major significant differences between the Robin and the Dragonfly. Uh, stick around for some slides and which I'll also go over all the specs between the two knives. Okay, as I was setting up for the slideshow, one last thing I guess. Um, I noticed that um, I was looking at the blade centering on the knives and while neither of them are perfect, what I noticed is um, the wobble on the blade when closed is very slight, ever so slight on the Spider Co, the one that's made in Seki, Japan. Um, and obviously it's tight when it's all the way open. But with the uh, Robin, um, the blade centering, uh, it's hard to tell because of how dark it is. It's not perfect, but if you notice the uh, wobble in the blade, it's much looser once uh, the blade is closed than when it is open. Now, when it is open, it is tight. There's no wobble in the blade when it is uh, open all the way. And I didn't mention before, but both knives have the boy dent. Um, it wasn't a difference, so I didn't really point it out. But yeah, this blade definitely has more movement when closed than on the uh, than on the dragonfly. The, the bird definitely has more movement on the blade. So that is another difference between the two. And that is the difference between being a third the cost. All right, now on to the slideshow.
What the chart above shows overall is uh, the Robin 2 is slightly larger and heavier than the Tattoo, but these differences are negligible. The primary difference at first glance between the two knives is the shape of the grip and the fact that the bird has a four position pocket clip and is held together with Torx screws. The Torx screws are not a factor when compared with the Dragonfly 2, which also uses Torx screws in their assembly. This will be discussed in a future comparison between the Dragonfly 2 and a Robin 2 with FRM scales. As for the quoted price, the Tattoo is more expensive, is one of the more expensive Dragonflies. This same can be said for the blacked out Robin 2. While the prices will vary depending on dealership, it is safe to assume that the Tattoo will cost about three times that of the Black Robin 2. Let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with the Tobias. I really do appreciate it and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.